I'm Edwin Rutz, the founding director of the Center for Building a Culture of Empathy. And for more than 11 years, I've been researching, using, and developing practices that support the building of a more empathic uh, society. And in this photograph, I'm mediating an empathy circle between uh, the political left and the political right. I would like to welcome you to this about 25 minute presentation on how to take part in a basic empathy circle. I'm really excited to share this practice because I find it to be the most effective gateway or first step process for building an empathic way of being and skills. Uh, I'm convinced uh, that if this practice would be widely adopted, it could contribute to greater well-being for all people. And this is a more in-depth presentation, and there are shorter versions of this uh, available. Uh, this presentation covers, uh, one, what is an empathy circle? Two, why participate? To cover some of the many uh, benefits of the practice. And three, how does it work? So a step-by-step -step how to take part. So what is an empathy circle? An empathy circle is a structured dialogue process that supports constructive and more meaningful dialogue in small groups. Uh, the process uh, increases mutual understanding and connection and trust between the participants by ensuring that each person feels fully heard and seen and understood to their satisfaction. Uh, the practice is based on empathic listening, which uh, is also called active listening, deep listening, or reflective listening. A definition of empathy. Uh, since we call the practice an empathy circle and we do empathic listening, I'd like to give you uh, an initial simple definition of empathy by Carl Rogers. And Carl is considered to be one of the top two or three most influential clinical psychologists in the world. He did extensive work on developing, you know, practicing and writing about the uh, empathic listening process. And I see him as really the grandfather of the practice and we are building on his foundational work. So uh, people uh, define empathy in many ways. So I would like to be really clear on what we mean by it. One way Carl initially described empathy is as a metaphor of being a companion on someone's journey, search, and exploration. And uh, he is, uh, here is one way he, he describes it. And these images are of him in a listening session. So empathy, he says, quote, it's saying this, I'm trying to be a companion to you in your search and your exploration. I want to know, am I with you? Is this the way it seems to you? Is this the thing you're trying to express? Is this the meaning it has for you? So in a sense, I'm saying I'm walking with you step by step. I want to make sure I am with you. Am I with you? So that is a little bit of my understanding about empathy, and that's the end quote. And uh, so here, he, so he's basically saying that empathy is being a companion on another person's journey. And actually, right now, uh, as a as as you're watching this, you're empathizing with me as you follow me on this journey of describing the empathy circle process. Uh, there's a you know you can go much deeper into the meaning of empathy, but this is I think a really good uh, first uh, simple definition. So uh, why participate? Number two, and uh, here are some of the many benefits of taking part in an empathy circle. And this is a bit more detailed than some of the other uh, introductory videos we have. Uh, first, there's the ease of participation. It is fairly easy to set up and participate in an empathy circle. Martin says, the incredible simplicity of the process makes it very accessible to everyone, and the immediate impact on the participants is dramatic. Chris, another participant, says, I found it very valuable. I have more hope because of the simplicity of this. You don't have to read a book. You don't have to practice. You just follow suit. 
And a benefit that I really like is mentioned uh, by Carl Rogers. Uh, he says, when someone really hears you without passing judgments on you, without trying to take responsibility for you, without trying to mold you, it feels damn good. And uh, Evan says, I like how good it felt to be heard and to hear others. I think this is a central benefit, just that it feels good to take part. Uh, the practice fosters mutual understanding of each other. Judith says, I love, I always love hearing people's experiences and what causes them to feel a certain way. And Rick says, this is a kind of elixir to slow down and be present and to get to know what's going on behind it all. So you really get to see more deeply into people's uh, experiences and their lives. So next, the practice builds relational skills in a uh, it is an effective gateway practice for exercising and building communication, active listening, empathy, and mediation skills. And these skills, uh, these empathic skills uh, building, to build these skills just takes a lot of practice. So I say practice, practice, practice. So every empathy circle are, so empathy circles are really a way to practice these skills over and over again. And just like you need regular exercise to build and maintain muscles, uh, so you also need this regular exercise to maintain and strengthen empathic listening skills. You just don't take one workshop and that's it. You, it's ongoing. Uh, you just got to keep practicing. So the practice builds trust among participants. Uh, Christy says, uh, this rocks. I really enjoyed this. It was like, okay, I'm not going to be attacked. They are actually listening. I'm not going to be afraid to bring up topics because that is what we are here for. And she was part of uh, one of our empathy circles between the political left and right, and she was on the political left. So she really appreciate on the political right, actually. Uh, next, it supports conflict resolution. Johann Galtung is the principal founder of the discipline of peace and conflict studies in the universities. And uh, he has mediated hundreds of conflicts all around the world. And he says, by peace, we mean the capacity to transform conflicts with empathy, without violence and creativity, a never ending process. So a conflict can be brought into the empathy circle and be uh, worked out with this empathic listening. And it's quite amazing how effective it can be. Uh, Lou says, this container of the empathy circle is, a, is strong enough to hold people really disagreeing with each other. And in this photo it, we, uh, that we took in the empathy tent, I used the, an empathy circle to bridge the political left and right divide. This uh, dialogue uh, ended with hugs between the participants and an agreement to continue the empathy circle online. Uh, it nurtures emotional healing. So back to Carl Rogers. Uh, he says, when the other person is hurting, confused, troubled, anxious, alienated, terrified, or when he or she is doubtful of self-worth, uncertain as to identity, then understanding is called for. The gentle and sensitive companionship of an empathic stance provides illumination and healing. In such situations, deep listening is, I believe, the most precious gift one can give to another. And it also provides emotional support. Marshall Rosenberg, who built on the work of Carl Rogers and founded the nonviolent communication process, says, time and again, people transcend the paralyzing effects of psychological pain when they have sufficient contact with someone who can hear them empathically. And finally, empathy is revolutionary, or so says Gloria Steinem, the well-known feminist. Uh, she says, empathy is the most revolutionary emotion. Jane Fonda, the actor and social activist, says, empathy, I have learned, is revolutionary. And in a global culture uh, based on power, dominance, aggression, hierarchy, where people are not listening and relating well to each other, uh, 
in this context, deep empathy and care are revolutionary, and that's really my experience uh, as well. So these were just some of the uh, benefits of, of an empathy circle, and you can find more at uh, empathycircle.com if you want to really get into, into depth on some of the other benefits. Next, uh, this section I'll cover in three parts. So this is how number three, how does it work? And A is we'll cover the setup guidelines. B, how does it work? or the how-to, actually, and then C is the tips. And starting with A, the setup guidelines. Uh, this is some of the overall guidelines for setting up the empathy circle, sort of for organizing it and setting it up. So who can participate? Anyone can participate, no requirements or prerequisites, except that the participants must agree to the process. And how many participants in an empathy circle? You know, generally you can have two to seven, and uh, I find uh, that four participants is ideal because uh, first, there's more time for each person to speak versus if it's a larger group. And there's a, more of a variety of perspectives uh, versus if it's smaller. And you have some observers uh, who uh, can observe and observe the act of listening and, and learn uh, from that. So you can have eight or more. And in that case, uh, we create what we call an empathy cafe. And what is an empathy cafe? Well, an empathy cafe is a larger group of eight, 20, 50, 100, or however many participants. They come together and after uh, an initial introduction to the process, they divide into empathy circles of four or so. So it's just a way to handle really large uh, groups. Uh, let's see, what topics might be discussed? Any topic can be talked about, uh, for example, personal, family, work, social, political, conflict related, or whatever, et cetera, issues. And when there is a topic, you are free to talk about what is alive in you in the moment as well, meaning you can also talk about uh, what is on your mind that you really want to express. You don't have to stay with the topic, but you're always encouraged to speak what's on your mind and you have a lot of energy for. And for free expression, again, you're free to say what you want. You know, you don't have to hold back. Uh, are there speaker time limits? Uh, yeah, there's three to five minutes is a good, in, good starting point. Uh, the idea is we want to keep people from going on and on and taking up all the time. So we want more or less equal time for, uh, for people to speak. And if there's a high level of conflict, I find you know less time to speak works better because everybody's anxious to uh, speak and is impatient, feels impatient. So maybe three minutes would be, be better in that case. So time limits can be expanded or even removed uh, according to the context. What is the length of an empathy circle? Uh, it is very flexible. You can fill the time, whatever time you have available. I find uh, two hours works really well. The first hour, people are getting used to the practice, you know, kind of finding their feet in the process. And then the second hour, it really starts going much deeper. So B, how does it work? Uh, this is the step-by-step -step practice. Here we have four participants who have come together for an empathy circle. There are four basic roles. There's the speaker uh, who will be speaking, the active listener who actively listens to the speakers. To the speaker, they are the companion on the speaker's journey. Uh, there's the silent listeners who observe and witness. They are silent companions on the speaker's journey, using our empathy metaphor. Uh, the facilitator who organizes and schedules the empathy circle, they have experience with the process and they will help keep the participants in the process and they also do the timekeeping 
However, everyone is responsible for holding the process as well. So facilitator starts the circle. To begin with, uh, the facilitator will welcome the participants. If participants don't know each other, the facilitator invites them to give short introductions, for example, their name, where they're from, maybe something personal about themselves. The three, the facilitator then briefly reviews the empathy circle process to remind everyone how it works. And hopefully you've watched this video so you already know how it works, had a little bit of an introduction. Four, they announce the discussion topic if there is one. Five, they set the speaker limits, perhaps five minutes is good to start with. Six, the facilitator then asks who would like to start as the first speaker. So to begin, a participant volunteers to be the first speaker. And as the speaker, you select who will be your active listener. You can select anyone you want, it's your choice. Uh, then, once you've selected your speaker, you speak about the topic given or whatever is alive for you. The intention is for you to speak freely and feel heard and understood to your satisfaction. Uh, you speak for a bit until you've expressed maybe an idea or two, and then you pause to give the active listener a chance to recap what they understand you're saying. And if you say too much, the listener may have difficulty in reflecting that. Then we move over to the active listener. As the listener, you are listening to the speaker to get an understanding of what they're saying and why it's important to them. Uh, they are give, you're giving your full attention to the speaker as a supportive companion on their inner journey and exploration. And when the speaker pauses, you recap your understanding of what they said and how they feel by reflecting the essence in your own words. Uh, you can summarize, you can paraphrase, or you can even say some of the words back to them. Even though you may have a strong impulse to respond with your own ideas, judgments, analysis, advice, sympathy, questions, and you want to really resist that impulse to do so, uh, these common blocks to, these common responses really kind of block the speaker from moving along their inner journey. And uh, you will be able to say whatever you want when it's your turn to be the speaker. You just do your best. If you don't reflect to the satisfaction of this speaker, uh, they can just say it again and then you can try again. Then back to the speaker, uh, check. Do you feel understood to your satisfaction? If you do not feel understood, you can say it again and perhaps try using different words. If you do feel understood, you can continue sharing. Again, after speaking a bit, another idea or two or so, pause to give your active listener a chance to recap their understanding of what you said. And then back to the active listener, you again share your understanding of what the speaker said and meant. The cycle of speaking and reflecting continues until you as the speaker do not have anything else you would like to say or until you get a signal from the timekeeper. If you get a signal from the timekeeper, then finish up what you're saying in a sentence or two, and after you get a final reflection, you can end your turn by saying, I feel fully heard, or something like that to indicate that you're done with your turn speaking. At that point, the roles rotate. The active listener becomes the speaker. The person they select becomes a new active listener. The others in the circle become silent listeners. Uh, and this process of taking turns and speaking and active listening continues for whatever time is allotted for the empathy circle. As mentioned, for fostering deeper dialogue, two hours is a good amount of time. And now, uh, some tips uh, for the different roles. And if you're the speaker, a tip for number one is you can select who you would like to be your active listener. It's always your choice. 
for inclusion and to give everyone more or less equal time is good to select participants that haven't had a turn recently. Uh, number two, speaker tip two, if you don't have anything else to say, or you don't have anything, you're, let's say you've been chosen, you reflected, and now it's your turn, and you don't have anything to say. So in this case, you can pass on your turn by you select someone to be your active listener. You can say something like, I have nothing to say. The active listener will recap and say, you don't have anything to say, and you just reply, I feel fully heard, and then the active listener becomes the speaker. Then your turn has been passed on to them, and you know, that's just one way of passing on your turn. Uh, speaker tip three, remember to pause often to give the listener a chance to reflect back what was heard. We mentioned this a couple of times because uh, you really need to do that pausing periodically. The active listener tip number one, if the speaker is starting to say a lot and go on and on and on, and you feel you won't be able to recap it all, then you can actually ask for a pause so that you can reflect your understanding. Uh, you can raise your hand and say, oh, God, can I reflect that? And just get their attention so you can recap what it is that uh, you heard, you understand that they just said. Active, and tip num active listener tip number two, as, the, as mentioned, as the active listener, you may have a desire to respond to something the speaker said or want clarification. So when recapping, you really want to refrain from injecting your own thoughts and responses and judgments and questions, since these can block empathy. And you'll have time when it's your turn, uh, but right now it's really the focus is on the speaker and their journey. And if you start judging, it's sort of like you're, somebody on, is on a journey and you're judging, you're saying, no, you're going the right direction, you're going the wrong direction, or let's go another direction, or I don't like the direction you're going, or are we there yet? Or you're starting to analyze the direction they're going. And all those things kind of disrupt the speaker and block them from going on their journey. So uh, we do not want to do that. So listen, silent listener tip one. So listen, and witness, observe, you can take notes, you wanna refrain from injecting your own thoughts, comments, and responses. Uh, when you're, you'll, you know, your, the turns will come around to you and then you'll be able to be heard to your satisfaction. Just you know, pay attention and listen to the, to the journey of the speaker. So in closing, uh, we covered how to take part in a basic empathy circle, uh, what is an empathy circle, a few of the many benefits, and a step-by-step -step how to take part. And uh, really the best way to learn the practice is just to take part and learn by doing. Uh, you can pick it up usually just by observing and just take part in an empathy circle. It's fairly easy and quick to pick up, and uh, as was mentioned. And I hope you'll join us or host your own empathy circle. There is more in-depth material on taking part and facilitating at empathycircle.com. And if you find this video helpful, you can like it and share it and post any questions or feedback in the chat window. Uh, it helps us make uh, these videos more effective. And I look forward to seeing you in the Empathy Circle. And thank you for listening.